Whether you are new to film photography or a long time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews to how to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! Hi everyone, welcome back to the Analog Wonderland YouTube channel. I just want to give a bit of context before we get stuck into this video. Shannon and I actually recorded this last year for last year's Halloween, but you know, life is very busy at Analog Wonderland and we haven't got around to posting it till now, I'm afraid. But the good news is that pumpkins are most likely all on special offer right now. So there has never been a better time to try pinhole pumpkin photography. I hope you enjoy. I also want to give a massive shout out to Sebastian for his help when we were recording this video and helping us get into all the mathsy bits and bobs of pinhole photography. You can find him at the handles below. He does some awesome work, so definitely check it out. Hi, welcome back to the Analog Wonderland YouTube channel. I'm Emma, Marketing Assistant at Analog Wonderland, and this is Shannon. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? Just say hi. <laughs> hi. So Shannon is a member of our warehouse team and has very kindly agreed to help me out with today's how-to YouTube video. We are going to be making pumpkin pinhole cameras. So for those of you who don't know what a pinhole camera is, it could be anything. Uh, people get very creative with pinhole cameras. You basically need to pin a hole into an object, uh, apply some film to it or photographic paper, and this can turn into a camera. Uh, I don't have that much experience with pinhole cameras other than this lovely one that I made at a workshop recently using a matchbox. We're going to try and apply this principle, but to a pumpkin. Um, Sebastian has tried to help us out with the technical elements of pinhole cameras. We have the frame, yeah? Let's say this is our 35mm frame, yeah? Mm. 35. Now, the question is, how big of a flange distance, so you know, if you remember this symbol, this is the symbol for where your sensor is or the film is on the camera itself. Yeah. It's, it's somewhere placed, I don't know, let's say here, for example, because this is where the film will be in this example. So we need to figure out the distance from where the film is and where the light comes in mm. so we don't get it too small or we don't get it too big because then we're gonna we're gonna waste more film so we need to get it just right oh my God. so we have exactly you know let's say 36 shots or something like that mm. so that's why we need to basically find out our flash distance this is the pinhole lens right so focal length it's pin hole diameter divided by 0 0.03679 this is too much <laughs> There are a few equations you can do to work out the correct aperture and all that stuff, but um, we're just going to wing it, so let's see how it goes. So, to get started, let's go through the things you'll need to make your own pumpkin pinhole camera. First off, what film will we be using? Shannon? We're going to be using Kodak Ultramax. Nice. We've chosen to go with colour film today because, well, the Wonder Lab can turn it around faster for us. But also, we've chosen to use a high speed film. I would recommend starting with a high speed film when doing pinhole cameras. This could be black and white or colour. Probably starting with black and white is a better idea because there's a bit less to go wrong. But higher speeds will work better for pinhole cameras in general because the exposure times won't be as long. So, what else do we need? Spoons. 
to carve out your pumpkins and get rid of all the guts. Black electrical tape. This is so you can make sure your pumpkin is as light tight as possible and there's no light getting through that will expose your film accidentally. Scissors to cut things. A big sharp knife to carve your pumpkins. <laughs> Some empty film canisters. And it's important with these that you make sure they still have a little tail of film on that you can attach your new roll to. Some sellotape. A pin. Some black spray paint. This is also to make sure your pumpkin is completely light proof. Some tin foil. Ah! <laughs> This is to help make your shutter and also it's a light proof material. Some paper clips. And a ruler. Some pens and pencils. Is that everything Shannon? Oh, and of course your pumpkin. So we've got a medium sized one but also some mini ones. The way we are planning to make these pumpkin pinhole cameras is by putting each canister on the side of the pumpkin and it will feed through like a normal camera. So the bigger the object is, the more film you're going to waste when feeding the film across. So these mini ones work really well. And I think that's everything. So let's get started. Hi guys. So what we're gonna do in a very scientific process is get a piece of string longer than that and put it around your pumpkin and then fold it in half and then hopefully that will be the center point of your pumpkin and you can do that the other way too so you get it roughly in the center we're going to try two different techniques to see which works best my pumpkin because it's a lot smaller i'm just going to put the pinhole directly in the pumpkin Shannon's pumpkin is a bit bigger, so we're going to cut a little frame out of that and then make another shutter with foil and the pinhole poked through a piece of foil stuck on there. Once we've done that, we're going to slit lines down the side and that's where the canister is going to slot into. So this needs to be, um, this needs to be quite far forward because we don't want too much distance between the film and the lens and once we've poke them through, we can eventually tape them on so they become part of the camera like this matchbox. But before we do that, we need to feed the film through. So here we're just fleshing out our pumpkins. Try and make sure you get as much of the pumpkin guts out as possible. We don't want to make pumpkin film soup and any extra flesh that gets on the film could interfere with the results or contaminate your chemistry. Uh, don't worry about being too precious with getting your pinhole exactly right. This is just a bit of fun and something experimental to do with photography, so just enjoy it. Okay guys, um, we think my technique is flawed. <laughs> the pumpkins are too irregular to find a centre point like this, so just put it on where you think about the middle. Once we had marked out the slits for our film to feed through and the centre point for the pinhole, we got a sharp knife, be careful with sharp knives everyone, and began to carve out the shapes for the film. I have to no feed idea through. what I'm doing. I've got the little slits in mine and Shannon's cut her frame and her film is going to go a lot further forward because it's a bigger pumpkin. Um, Yay. Next, it was time to take our black spray paint and black out our entire pumpkin so that no light can accidentally seep through. We then popped it in the film drying cupboard to speed up the drying process. Don't worry, there wasn't any film in there at the time. The pumpkins are dry all blacked out and looking really beautiful. <laughs> now we are going to try to feed in the film to the camera. Okay, so Shannon is going to try and follow my 
very clear instructions to put the film into the camera. So Shannon, first take a box of Ultramax, open it up, and then see the lead. You're going to cut off the tail so that it's completely straight line and there's no tail at the end. <laughs> then grab an empty canister so basically what's going to happen is the new roll of film is going to feed into the empty roll and if you have a look at our matchbox example you'll see that one canister is the right way up and one canister is pointing down and that helps you remember which canister has the film in so Shannon, pull a bit of the new roll out. Not too much, you don't want to waste lots of film. No. A bit more. Then we are going to have to put one side of that through the pumpkin. Which way do I face it? So this is very important. The <laughs> Emulsion side should be facing towards the shutter, so that's the matte side. This yeah, so the shiny side should be facing away from the shutter. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, Shannon's putting some gloves on because the inside of the pumpkin is still a bit wet. That did not work. <laughs> and you can see that the film canister is attached to the outside of the pumpkin. Shannon's now going to feed the other side of the film through the other slit and back into the empty canister. This can be quite fiddly, so just be patient. Okay, so next, Shannon has shoved a paper clip um, into the empty canister, and this is how you're going to advance the film. Uh, she's made sure that there's no film hanging out of the pumpkin, and now she's going to use black electrical tape to seal the edges so no extra light can get through. Okay, update guys. Um, Sebastian has told me I need to flesh out the middle more where the pinhole is because it's too thick at the moment. So I've given up and just gone through a hole as well because I couldn't get thin enough. So you guys, your camera should now look something like this. Um, tape it as much as you can with the electrical tape so uh, none of the film is exposed to the light. And then you get a paper clip and put it in the empty canister and then you'll see that will advance the film. Uh, if it's not staying in, you can like scrunch up a bit of tissue and shove that in there. And that should hold the clip a bit more tightly. Uh, next thing is to put your lid on and tape all of that as well so no light can get through. So Shannon's is nearly complete. She's just helping me to flesh out mine a bit more. Um, so the next step is to make a little foil window over this where the pin will go and then another piece of foil which will act as the shutter. So next take a square of foil and you're going to cover the frame of your pinhole camera and just tape it on in front. I'm about to poke the pinhole um, this needs to be as small as possible so uh, be very careful. I'm scared. <laughs> Is mine bigger than yours? I think we forgot to film the last step, but the final thing was to make another flap of tin foil, which acts as your shutter, so you just lift this open and close for when you are taking the photo. And here are our beautiful spooky pumpkin pinhole Halloween cameras. Hi guys, we're outside, ready to take some photos. 
Remember before you start that you've already exposed the bit that's running through the middle, so wind on a few frames first. Not too sure um, how the advances work. I think about one turn is one frame, but it's all a bit experimental, so just give it a go. <laughs> Let's go. Like that? Yeah, and then try again. What else you want to take a picture of for me? So turn to at nine seconds. I think so. For the timings of the exposures we just experimented, but there are some great apps you can get for pinhole photography that will take a light reading and recommend how long to do your exposures for. So we've bo both got to the point where our paper clips are just bending, so we assume the film is finished, uh, we don't want to risk snapping it. So we're going to go into the dark room and take the pumpkin apart so we can get all the film into one canister and then put it through the machine to be processed! Yay! <laughs> so guys, we're cutting here, cutting the film where it's at the end and winding it all into this canister to go through the machine. Do you want to turn the lights off, Shannon? Oh. <laughs> so this is where things went a bit pear-shaped for us at the time of recording this video the wonder lab had only been open for a few weeks here's some footage of the team getting our scanner into the building and unfortunately we were having a few teething problems with our color processor so we couldn't put the film through the machine that and the fact that our film was covered in pumpkin juice we just didn't want to risk putting it through our processor if you are sending in film like this to a lab make sure you give them warning of what your film's been through because there is a risk that it could contaminate the chemistry but luckily the film community of course came through for us and the amazing guys at Jack's lab offered to process the film they use rotary processing which means the films could be processed individually and not risk contaminating any of the chemistry thank you so much to jack and his team for working magic on our pumpkin pinhole films uh, we know it must have been a challenge uh, jack did say that they were quite hard to wash and it did freak out their scanner somewhat but we are so happy that we actually got some results sadly my roll actually came out blank I don't think I had light sealed it enough some of the spray paint had maybe washed off but Shannon's results are absolutely incredible and considering she doesn't really shoot much film this was her first time ever doing anything like this I just felt so proud of her here are some of her photos. I love how you can see the orange hue of the pumpkin like bleeding into some of them. There are also some really interesting and bizarre abstract shapes of the from the way the pumpkin and foil have been cut to uh, create the frame of the photograph. But overall it was so much fun and I'm really pleased that we got some photos out of it in the end. Pinhole photography is a really great experimental different thing to do something to challenge your film photography and if you just want a creative kick and something new to try I'd really recommend you could do it with absolutely anything a matchbox a pumpkin name your vegetable you can make it into a camera I really hope you enjoyed this video and that some of you maybe will give it a go yourselves if you do please let us know comment down below and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.